and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. When it says put on, it means it's possible not to put it on. Hallelujah. Now it says put on what? And when it says the whole armor, it means it's possible to put half or one or... <laughs> now, now that scripture is encouraging us. Put on the whole armor because you are a fighter you are a soldier you are a warrior you can't go to war half half uh, how appear half raru you are half what half clothed <laughs> you you can't go to war how appear half again you need to put the whole armor hallelujah now let's continue that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. The wiles means the schemes. The devil hates your compassion. He's always scheming and planning against you. He wants just a small chance to get to you. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says don't give Satan a chance. Because once he gets a chance, he will use it. He won't, he won't play about that. He gets a chance, he use it. He use it like a, like a robber. You know, when a robber gets a chance, he really attacks and takes whatever thing he wants. Hallelujah. And, and, and in fact, he's a robber. Satan is a robber. He wants to kill and to steal and to destroy. When he wakes up in the morning, he's planning. I want to kill and to steal and to destroy. He will put traps. He will shoot at you. He will throw sicknesses, accidents, whatever he can use. He will cause conflicts at home. He will cause conflicts at work. He will cause conflicts on the way to work or on the way to church. Because his aim is to do what? Is to kill and to steal and to destroy. And guess who he is fighting? He does not worry much about those that are already in his flock. He wants those that are in the flock of Jesus Christ. Because those ones are a nightmare to him. Hallelujah. Now, today I want you to know that you are a warrior, you are a fighter, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil. Look at verse number 12. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, number two, against powers, number three, against the rulers of darkness of this age, number four against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. It means these are the demonic ranks. Satan has ranks. He has a kingdom that has ranks. If, if you beat this rank, he, he, he releases a higher rank. If you beat that one, he releases another rank. If you beat that one, he releases another rank. He will always be fighting against us. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you are a warrior. When you finish fighting, you must still be standing. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when you finish fighting, you must still be standing. Now look at number 13. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. You take it so that you are able to withstand. What is to withstand? Talk to me. What is to withstand? It's to oppose. It's to, it's to resist. It's to, against, to stand against. We are standing against the kingdom that has different ranks and is fighting us. And we are warriors. Hallelujah. And he knows that he is already defeated. That's why he always brings fear. The greatest tool of the enemy is fear. Hallelujah. That's why people most of the time they say what if. What if. What if. They fear things that they don't even know. Things that have not even happened. 
They become anxious for nothing. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. I, I hope you understand my statements. They become anxious for nothing, for things that are not there. Hallelujah. And whilst God says, be anxious for nothing, it means here, yeah, you don't have to worry about anything. Hallelujah. Verse number 14 says, Stand therefore, having gathered your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, look at that one, above all, above all, take the shield of faith, with which will be able to quench all the fiery darts. When it says fiery darts, it means the arrows that the devil shoot, they are burning. They have fire. It means wherever they hit, they explode, they cause fire. Hallelujah. That's why even small things, when they are in the hands of the devil, they become so big. They become so big. Have you ever seen that there can be a lie, a small lie, a rumor? Somebody was drinking five roses, he enjoyed, or she enjoyed five roses and cookies, and then she or he started talking about you. In no time, that whole thing is all over the place like a whirlwind. It's an arrow with fire. When it hits, it explodes. It causes the whole thing. And... And, 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 and when people are lying, they will always say, Batubari. <laughs> Batubari. Hmm. And when you try to find out who are those people, they are faceless, they are nameless. No one can pinpoint that so and so said this. Because it's something that is just quickly, quickly, quickly flying all over the place. Hallelujah. And why are all these things happening to us? Because we are what? We are what? We are warriors. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like when you are a soldier at the border, you expect a gunshot anytime. You expect an explosion anytime. Now, when you are the child of God, you must know that you are a warrior. There's explosion, there's a gunshot that can happen anytime. A fiery dart from the hands of the devil anytime can happen. Hallelujah. That's why other people are shocked in the morning. They kiss and goodbye, I'm going to work, hey, go well. But during the day, a sheriff brings paper saying, I'm divorcing you. Then, then you are amazed. What happened? What happened? In the morning, we were happy. I made breakfast, we ate, and she, he kissed me or she kissed me, went to job, to, to work. And, and now you are bringing these papers. <laughs> Why? When we are warriors, we are fighters, we are targets, and we are also targeting the enemy. Therefore, never lose heart, never be dismayed, never be discouraged in, in anything that you are doing. Hallelujah. And even when there are errors against you, don't be dismayed, don't be discouraged, don't lose heart. You are powerful. Look at your neighbor, say you are powerful. Say the Holy Spirit together with me and together with you as my family we are powerful if God be for us who can be against us hallelujah now look at verse number 17 it says and take the what the helmet of salvation the helmet is a hot head it protects your your, your head Remember, the head is carrying a vital organ there. Hallelujah. That's why if people want to shoot, they aim where? Either the head or the chest. Because they know that those organs, you touch them, that person switches off. <laughs> now God says, put on what? The helmet of salvation. It means our brains, our thoughts, our thinking is protected. Hallelujah. The next one, next one, what is the next one? Take the sword of the Spirit, the sword which is the, the word of God. Jesus Christ used the word of God to overcome Satan. When Satan tempted him, what did he say? It is, it is written. 
When the devil did not listen, he had to do it twice. It is written, and I say again it is, it is written. There are times that you must repeat the word of God many times until the devil hears it. Because he likes ignoring sometimes. Okay? And this word is a sword. It pierces. It cuts. It destroys. Now, now, for you to be able to use the word, to be able to use the sword as the warrior, that word must be in you. Remember, our weapons are not carnal. Okay? You don't have to be carrying a big Bible to show off that you, you, are, you are carrying a big sword. No, the word must be in your spirit. When you mention it, it must come out with power and authority, and it must cause explosion in the kingdom of darkness. But if it's not in your spirit, then you are, it's like just a recitation. It's like reading, what is that newspaper, the, the popular one? Yavaloi. Daily Sun. <laughs> daily Sun. It's like just Daily Sun. Because it's just a written word. It must be spoken word. It must be rhema word. It must be in your spirit. When you say it, it goes out with power. It cuts, it pierces, it destroys, it explodes in the kingdom of darkness. You are a warrior and you must know your weapons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we moving together here? Take what? The sword, which is the word. Number, where are we now? Verse 18. Is it verse 18? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to the end with all perseverance. And so a, soldier, a soldier does not just sleep like a baby. Akir. He's watchful, especially when the war is going. And in fact, they are even taught, they are even taught how to sleep for 10 minutes as if you have slept for eight hours. You, you just close your eyes and make sure that you go deep into your sleep. Ten minutes, you are done. And then you take your weapons again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. They are watchful all the time. Now, we as warriors, we must be what? Watchful. That's why there are other things that we don't take talk about them. We talk to them. Ah. I wish you, you, you hear what I'm saying. We don't talk about them, we talk to them. You don't talk about your mountains, you speak to your mountain. You mountain, get out of my way. Hallelujah. You don't make rooibos, five roses or green tea and start talking about your mountains. No, no. You get into your room and tell that mountain, mountain, today it's me and you, and I'm backed up by the Holy Spirit. You will know who I am today. Hallelujah. And when you do that, you are causing a shift in the spirit. You are dictating the, that atmosphere, even the way we batang. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, I want to encourage you that you are warriors and don't fear anything. You know, warriors, warriors are, are, are trained people. When the commander says forward march, what do they do? Forward march. Even if they are land mindset, that's fine. It is said that Hitler, the way he used to train his soldiers, he will, he will make fire in front of them and command them, take off your boots. Then they remove their boots. A very forward march. And there's fire there. Mm. He's, that's how he checks if you are a real soldier. Hallelujah. It is said that Shaga after war, he will check his soldiers at the back. If you have a scar at the back, it means you were running away. You are going to be killed by him. He's not going to send anyone to kill you. You are his. <laughs> because you are, not a good, you are not a good soldier. You are a coward. Why do you have scars at the back? You must die like a soldier. Your scars must be here in front because you were facing the war. Now, as children of God, let's face the war. We are not alone. If God be for us, who can be against us? We are more than conquerors. 
Hallelujah. And a soldier, he must know, you must know who you are. Mm. If I know who I am, I face the battle knowing that I am backed up by my kingdom and I know who I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of the Most High God. Hallelujah. I'm not alone. Jesus said, I'm standing at the door of your hand. I'm knocking. If you open, I will come in. And me and my father will come and dine with you. It means I am carrying the Trinity in me. Now, if I know that I have the Trinity, I will fear no evil. For the Lord is my, the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that's why I will not talk about my mountains. I will talk to my mountains. Many people are fearful now because of the virus. They are talking about the virus. They are talking about the many things that they fear. Kanti, it is best to talk to the mountain. Tell the virus, pack and go. Psalm 91 says, you will see a thousand falling on your left and ten thousand on your right and nothing will come near your dwelling place. You go to your room and say, Father, I thank you that this holy earth is my dwelling place. No evil will come next to my dwelling place. I thank you that even the people that stay with me, with me here are protected because I am here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord is upon you. His cloud is hovering above you. You are safe. You are under the shadow of the Almighty God. He says, I will protect you with my feathers. I will protect you under my wings. We are safe in the presence of God. Uh, I wish somebody was listening this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why our priority must, go, must be to go to church rather than going to a mall. Mm. People are not afraid to go to a mall again. They are afraid to go to church. They are not afraid to go to work, but they are afraid to go to church. And we don't blame them. Akir, we are a family. We are a family. We carry them in our prayers. That in case, in case they are going through stuff and we are not aware, we carry them in our prayers. Yes. Hallelujah. And that verse says, pray in the spirit. When you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, pray with the spirit. Then I said last time that with the Spirit is praying in tongues. And as you pray with the Spirit, as you pray in tongues, the, you reach another level where the Holy Spirit takes over. And when the Holy Spirit takes over, you begin to groan. You travail in the Spirit. That's why I'm saying that verse says pray in the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians, you pray with the Spirit. Study it, you will see it's a powerful thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Now keep fighting in your prayers. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you will need to fight together. This journey is very long. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now it is said that Christians are soldiers that kill their own injured soldiers. Now that thing must stop. We are a family. If you are injured, we must surround you and fight. Whilst, whilst others are taking care of you, others are fighting around you so that we don't lose others on the way. If you hear me, shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now let's keep fighting in prayer. And our weapons are not carnal. We are not fighting flesh and blood. We are fighting what? Those ranks, those four ranks, let's go through them. We are fighting what? Principalities, powers, rulers, spiritual wickedness. The devil is wicked. He's wicked. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Luke 18 from verse 1, from verse 1 up to 5. Luke 18 from verse 1 up to 5. This is Jesus speaking a parable. He says, 
verse 1 up to 5, Luke 18, verse 1 up to 5, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. Hallelujah. When it says men, it means people. Like, are you a person? You have to pray. For us, prayer, it's not an option. Hallelujah. That man ought always to pray and not to faint. That word faint, what does it mean? To be discouraged, to lose heart, to be dismayed. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared no God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to encourage you that as a soldier you need to be consistent. Be consistent in your prayers. You don't pray because things are fine. Or you don't pray only because things are not fine. We pray always. We spend time in the secret place of the Most High God. Be consistent like this we do. Hallelujah. Look, the, look at the contrast there. It starts by saying there was a judge. And this judge did not even consider God. He did not fear God. He did not regard any person. And when he's done talking about that, he, then a widow comes. And this widow was so consistent that that judge had to change his mind. Initially, he did not want to help the widow. He did not care about the widow. But the widow kept on saying, please avenge me. There are people that are causing problems to me. Deal with them. You are a judge. Now, the moral of of that story, that man is, in fact, the moral is to encourage every one of us to do what? To be continual in our prayers. The moral is that man is always to pray consistently. Don't shelf pray. It is not an option. It's like faith. Our faith is not an option. We live by faith. The righteous shall live by, by faith. Prayer is a system of kingdom legislation. When you pray, you are declaring things. In the spirit, there are shiftings and changes. Things are lining up to your favor when you pray. If you don't pray, things will be the way they want to be in your disadvantage. I don't know whether my English is right there. Hallelujah. Now, prayer is a system of kingdom legislation. Prayer immortalizes your presence. It goes to a place where you cannot go. Hallelujah. You can speak here. You can declare here. You can decree things here. And things can change in another continent. Because prayer immortalizes your presence. It goes to a place where you cannot go and begins to correct things. Mm, there are things that must be corrected in our lives. There are things that must be corrected in our communities. There are things that must be corrected in our continent, in our country, in our government. How do we correct them? We begin to speak to those mountains. And prayer will correct them. Prayer will flatten those mountains. Prayer will cause the corona to peg and go. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not the first virus, and it will go like others went. Mm -hmm. And we must pray that it goes soon. If it plans to stay for a long time, let's pray that God let this thing vanish immediately. Let everyone be shocked. What happened? Because we know what happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. There is power in prayer. It corrects things in the spirit. It, and when things are corrected in the spirit, they manifest in the flesh. We are able to see the results. Hallelujah. That's why I don't talk about your issues. Talk to your issues. Mm, I wish somebody was listening. This parable is about a judge that does not fear God. A judge that has no regard for man. Yet this widow uses this mystery of prayer. And the judge said by continuing coming, she will do what? She will weary me. Her continual coming to my office will weary me. Let me just answer her. Hallelujah. Now the key here is what? Consistency. Be consistent in your prayers. Don't give up. Don't, don't look at what you see with your eyes. Look at what you want to see. Stretch your faith. The Bible, the Bible is clear that our faith, faith is what? Is the substance of things hoped for. Now, I always explain that with substance. Substance is material. Now, when you have faith, you already have material to build those things that you want. Hallelujah. If you want a baby, you build your baby by faith. You have the material already. My boy is coming. He's a handsome young boy. He's going to be a blessing to the family. He's going to be a blessing to my community. He's going to be a blessing to my country. When his name is mentioned, everyone must stop because this is a blessing from God. You are busy building that child by faith. You have the material. Faith is the substance. Faith is the material. Hallelujah. You are looking for a job. You build your job by faith. You build your business by faith. I thank you that I have a business, a solution to the problems of our country, a solution to the problem of our continent. And my God, when the name of my business is mentioned, everyone must stop because God, you have anointed my right hand to accumulate wealth. I'm going to accumulate wealth and I'm going to be a blessing to my people. I'm going to bless my family. I'm going to bless my church. I'm going to bless my community. I'm going to bless my continent hallelujah ah, i wish somebody was listening this morning be content be consistent in your prayer consistent 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 don't stop it does not matter what you see there are times when you pray things looks like they are becoming worse they are taking a wrong direction you must know that is the kick of a dying horse things are, are being corrected in the spirit in no time it's just a matter of time things will be changed things will be changed things will be changed be consistent in your prayer you are a warrior you are a fighter hallelujah fighters don't give up they fight they'd rather drop in the battlefield Mm. now you have to be consistent that means when I'm weak prayer makes me strong mm, hallelujah prayer makes me what? strong you may think coronavirus will kill me wait until I pray you may think I'm not going to find a job wait until I pray you may think this disease won't go wait until I pray you may think I won't get that job mm. You don't know when I'm with my God in my closet, in my secret place, that things are changing. Things are about to change. I decree and I declare this morning, your situation is about to change. Your health is about to change. The job situation is about to change. The situation in your family is about to change. Because prayer changes things. Be consistent in your prayers. Hallelujah. You may think my children will amount to nothing. Wait until I pray. Hallelujah. It's true they may be taking drugs, but it's just for now. Things are changing. I have the material. I'm building their future. I'm building their destiny. And in no time you will see the results. If you hear me, shout Jesus! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. 
It's true that you, 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 you said, your prophecy said, I'm going to fail. Ah, wait until I pray. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, in this parable, Jesus is teaching that saints are not powerless. We are powerful. Especially when you understand the jurisdiction of the spiritual realities that prayer can capture. If you understand that, ah, my God, you know that even if I whisper my prayer, it's like I'm dropping a dynamite in the kingdom of darkness. I don't have to shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Just by whispering Jesus. That's why it's important, even at work, keep praying, keep praying. When you are busy working on your computer or whatever job you are doing, you are busy praying. You don't have to disturb other people around you. Ne? You just whisper that prayer. You, you, are busy, you are busy dropping those bombs to the kingdom of darkness. You are dropping a bomb to that mountain before you. And that mountain is going to be scattered in no time. Hallelujah. It does not matter what your eyes see. We don't live by sight. We live by faith. Faith does not care what the eyes see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer can move things. You can grow your way through prayer. You start looking weaker, but the more you pray, the more you become stronger. You can transition to a newer version of yourself through prayer. People that pray, they transition, they go to another level. Hallelujah. Now, just for a test, just take some few days of prayer. Just, just take time and spend time in the presence of God. And tell me what will be the comments of people when you leave that place, when you meet people. <laughs> because prayer will transition you to a newer version of yourself. Others will, will, will move away from you. Why? Because there is that presence of God in your face. There is that uh, presence around you. You will see people moving away from you. Even those that were looking down upon you, they call you sir, they call you ma'am. Ah, madam. Ah, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. But if hotel, like because of that glory, that atmosphere around you, you are now transitioned to a better version of yourself. I wish somebody was listening. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at Luke 9, verse 29. Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Luke 9, verse 29. Are you there? Let's read. And as he prayed, what happened? The appearance of his face was altered. And then? Now, it is Jesus on that time of transfiguration. He's with his three disciples. He prayed, and then immediately what happened? His appearance was altered. The appearance of his face, the clothes that he was wearing, they also became what? Glittering. They were white. They were shining. Mm. Now, two things happened there. The face was altered and the clothes were altered also they were glittering that means prayer can transform you from a weak man to a strong man hallelujah and you don't have to to lift to lift uh, those weights to look like a prayer warrior no no you can lift them or you may not even lift them but prayer will make you to be a great person Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, when Jesus prayed, his face did what? It was transformed. Now, prayer can transform you from a timid lady to a strong lady. Mm. <laughs> I wish somebody is going with me here. Now, now I, I can be a newer version of me if I spend time in prayer. A strong man. A strong woman women even if facially or body wise i look weak but inside the devil knows that that one kid don't touch hallelujah kid don't touch uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor we will don't touch hallelujah and then tell your neighbor say us come on so i'm powerful Hallelujah. That's why you don't have to rejoice over my yesterday. Prayer can change my yesterday. Hallelujah. Yesterday I was soul of Kish, not even knowing where the donkeys were. But when I prayed, I was able to locate Samuel. And when I went back home, I was a prophet among other prophets. That's prayer that will change you and become another person. Ah, my God, my God, my God. We are warriors. We are powerful. We can change atmosphere. We can change situations. Our mountains are going to explode from today. They, we are scattering them. Hallelujah. Just stand up for one second. Say, mountain be scattered in the name of Jesus. Come on. Say it like you believe. Say, mountain. I scatter you in the name of Jesus. I scatter you in the name of Jesus. I scatter you in the name of Jesus. Mm, take your seat. Say, take your seats. Men can grow. Men can rise to superior version of themselves when they pray. how to have Satan meeting our Satanela <laughs> he's calling you a devil he's saying that devil is awake because he knows that you are causing a problem to his kingdom therefore don't look down upon yourself you are powerful yeah. hallelujah yeah. hallelujah yeah. and when you see things going the wrong direction when you are praying them to go this way you must know it's just the kick of a dying horse you are busy changing things in the spirit in no time they are going to manifest you are busy praying for your husband, he's becoming worse, keep praying. You are praying for your children, they are becoming worse, keep praying. You are praying for your wife, she's becoming worse, keep praying. It's just a kick of a dying horse. Things will change. Hallelujah. Because with prayer, you are aligning things in the spirit. You are legislating. You are causing alterations, changes. When things are not going well at work, keep praying. When everyone is panicking because of coronavirus, keep praying. Hallelujah. Because it's through the case, it's on, if people are not really careful, they will always increase. Again. Like now in our country, they are increasing. And when you check, our brothers and sisters, they don't care. Again. But some may have failed. I have no mask. But let's go to Molong. I have no. I have no. I social distancing. I have a get it. And because when this thing starts, deaths are far from you. If you lay a bus on a mara, and to a camera, who I when I went to Mangosuli, when nobody knows anyone, and then they become careless. And then in no time it hits in the family. Now let's also pray for our brothers and sisters that are careless. medula Here we are fighting a demon If even if you catch it, you don't know where you got it. As long as you meet people, that's why you must put a mask. When you put a mask, you are protecting yourself and you are protecting 
others. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Even at home when you arrive, make sure that you, you sanitize. Don't hug your kids before you, 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 you sanitize. I care how you do touch it emotionally. Just sanitize and make your children understand that more high net how to enaka gate reizang sanitize. Hallelujah. Because if I catch it somewhere and I go home and we are six at home, keep problem me about to have a six yan. Hallelujah. Amen. Now take care of yourself, educate yourself, and you will be safe. We can post our lives. We can post the lives of our kids. Our kids must go back to school. The only thing we must do is to teach them, protect yourself, protect other people around you. The only fear we may have, kia baba kana baba, baba, shera, everything. Le haba ajaba chencha na diskafti nagir. This one. But baba hulu we can Teach them, protect yourself and protect others. Hallelujah. And, and God, God is a wonderful God. He always protects these kids. Amen. Ask teachers. Those kids, they play rough. They don't break their bones. They are never, never hurt to it terribly so. It's one after a long time. I was a teacher. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, look at this coronavirus. God is going to protect kids. He's going to protect them. Because now God deployed these angels to make sure that he protects them. Now, we can post our lives, we can post the lives of other people as it's just to educate ourselves. How does this thing affect others? All right? They say, if keep your mask, I protect, I protect, therefore I'm going to use my mask. Nothing. Maybe 15 rand, I'll wreck a mask. And you don't even have to buy a mask. There are many clothes at home, it's a halagir. Hallelujah. Amen. After 100 years, when that generation will be struggling with other diseases, they'll be, they'll be seeing our pictures. That's why it's not say the picture. After 100 years, they'll be watching those pictures. But who kill a virus? Hallelujah. It's like I like watching the virus. 18 months? Was it 1850 or 18 what? They were, they were also putting these things, walking on the streets. I like watching them. Get oh. Now it's our turn. We are putting these things. Live up after 100 years. They'll be putting. And I'm not sure why China is going to manufacture a lot. Live on everything, man. Where was I? China. <laughs> We must be continuous and consistent in our, in our prayer. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't lose a heart. Don't be dismayed. Be consistent in your prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Let's go quickly. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. I'm about to close Philippians. Maybe that's the last scripture I'm going to read. Are we there? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If you want to guard your heart and your mind, be anxious for nothing and be prayerful with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Hallelujah. That scripture tells us that prayerlessness creates what? Anxiety. And anxiety is the natural reaction of man to the unknown. Mm. Or to uncertainty. It's the natural reaction of man to uncertainty. There are no guarantees anyway. There's hopelessness. I'm a nurse. I'm not going to work. Mm -mm. Corona. Mm -mm. Kandi, if you dwell in the presence of God, you know that you are protected. Again. And then you do your best and let God do the rest. I'm always saying we can't pause our lives. Life must continue. Oh, no, no. The, the country in negative got three trillion. We are owing a three, tri three trillion negative. And my prayer, our leaders must not make deals with China. Those people are cruel. They give you a lot of money, you owe them forever, and they take things. Throughout Africa, they are busy taking Africa. They are busy colonizing Africa. Because our leaders are greedy, most of them. They take money under the table. They build roads called Kenya. Kenyans cannot pay them back. Then they own the roads. Kiditila za kuchai. Go Africa. They build base. Base ko huwe mangdike pagir. The country cannot pay. They take. This is our pot. You rent Kobona. They build airport. Go Zambia. Zambia cannot pay. What do they do? They take the airport. Ki airport ya go chai. How fit go Zambia? More airport to go chai. Now I hope our president Cyril won't make deals. Liba while they are cruel. I don't know why I'm saying this. But be anxious for nothing. nothing. I'm glad because the, the more Facebook he will read, the president will, he will hear me talking. <laughs> Make your request known. Make the issues of Corona known to God. And you do that with thanksgiving. Agir. Make your housing issues known to God. You tell God about issues at home. You make the issues of your finances known to God. With thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving, it's a, it's a highest demonstration of humility. It proves that you acknowledge that yourself, with your abilities, with your wisdom, with your strength, there's nothing you can do. You depend on God. And then you say, God, these are my requests. I'm making them known to you. And I thank you. Because the word of God says, when I call, you hear me and you answer me. Thank you for the answers. And you stand on that word that God has heard you and God has answered you. If you hear me, say amen. Let's all stand and let's just thank him for his word this morning. Thank him, thank him, and ask him to give you the spirit in prayer and obey consistent. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, raise your voice. Let's talk to him. Refuse to be anxious. Refuse to be anxious in the name of Jesus. Refuse to fear. Barahande kelebe besika da kada barakazika tabroko zuri katala baba lamanda.